Hey guys, I hope you and your families are doing well. In this video, I'm going to take you through all of my swing trades from January 2024. I'm going to show you the wins, I'm going to show you the losses, and I'm going to show you the break-even trades. And you can see here a print screen from Interactive Brokers Trading Summary. So we're going to be going through the tickers that you see here. So I can really explain my thought process for why I was targeting an entry, where I did, where was my initial stop loss placement, how was I free rolling the trade, how am I currently managing the position now as well. Now there's going to be a couple of these that we ignore, KD, Meta, and Nvidia, as they were entries from December. 2023 so we're going to focus on all the stocks where i had an entry in january 2024 so i then marked up the charts like this and this is what we're going to be working for i'm going to show you the winning trades a lot of these are still open positions all of these that are winning trades the positions are still open so i'll take you through how i'm thinking about managing the position at present i'll take you through the break even trades as well talking about kind of post analysis things i could have done better i'll, I'll take you through the losing trades as well so like uri bldr shopify uh, wheat and precious metal as well so i hope you find this video very educational educational indeed talking about the wins talking about the break even talking about the losses talking about all things trade management as well at the end of the video i'm going to show you a couple of market smith charts so you can really dial in and focus on okay what are the key fundamental criteria that i'm also looking for when i'm targeting positions in these stocks so there today's video sponsor if you're interested in a discounted trial then there is a link in the comments section below so before we delve into the charts and I take you deep in terms of the identification, the initial stop loss placement and the trade management aspects, I'd like to give you a high level overview of the statistics. Now, please bear in mind that all the stocks listed over here in the wins, these are current open positions at the time of filming. So the average gain in the win rate is subject to change. If some of these stocks are going to go on big runs, then the average gain is likely to increase. If I get knocked out of a couple of these break even, then the win rate is obviously going to decrease. So please do bear that in mind. So January 2024, I took 14 trades three of which were break-even trades. So that's PHM, it's FCX, and KKR. Again, we're going to look at every single one of these, and I've marked the charts up for you in TradingView so you'll really understand my thought process. Excluding those, there's been 11 trades in total. So the total wins, currently there's seven winning trades. Total losses is four. The average gain on the winning trades, again, this is subject to change, of course, is 5.96%. The average loss, which is not going to change because they're already locked in as losing trades, is 2.03%. So really happy with how I'm controlling the risk, keeping it nice and tight. And the win rate at present, which again is subject to change if I get knocked out of some of these break even, is currently 64%. You can see some of the other statistics here as well, but the current reward to risk ratio is 2.94. I'm very happy with that. The expected return is 3.06. So in terms of overview stats here, I'm pretty happy with how I'm trading. Pretty happy with how January, um, January 2, 2024 has gone. Could I have done a couple of things better? Yeah, I could. So let's now dive across to a couple of charts. Now take you through things that I think have gone well, things that I could be doing better, and things that I'm focusing on for my own trading. So we've got the charts loaded up on TradingView, and as I said, I'm going to take you through the wins, I'm going to take you through the break-evens, and I'm going to take you through the losing trades as well. Giving you a little bit of a high-level overview, you can obviously see the entry price, and I'm pointing to the date, similar with the free rolling as well, and then I'm pointing to the date. The blue line that you see here, that's going to show you where the initial entry price was. So for CrowdStrike, it's going to be two, it's going to be 247.94, and then this bold horizontal red line, that's going to indicate the initial stop-loss placement, so just underneath the low of the prior day by a cent, that's going to be 1.74% initial risk the dashed red line that you see here this is going to indicate my current stop loss placement because i said this is an open position for me right now which is 26993 so we're going to be working through these and i'll really try and dive deep in terms of my thought process so what i will say here with crowdstrike is you're going to see a variation of different types of setups so hopefully by seeing all of these you're going to see the kind of setups that i like targeting now these are more low pivot pullback buys so you're going to see that with crowdstrike you're going to see that with uber and you're going to see that with broadcom and now they were all setting up in a similar fashion when I was entering them. So it really kind of, for me, the type of entries that I'm, I'm targeting is dictated by, well, what are the type of setups that the market is providing? Is it low pivots? Is it, is it mid pivots? Is it higher base breakouts? So you're going to see variations, low pivots, mid pivots, higher base breakouts for like ESTC and INFA. Okay, so different types of um, different types of setups and like pullback buys as well, and like wheat and precious metals, which didn't work out. I got stopped out the, uh, the same day. But so what I'm looking for is I'm really looking for the leading stocks and a lot of what I do is trying to identify leading stocks. And at the end of the video, I'll show you the market smith data. I would certainly do it for uh, for CrowdStrike. I like huge earnings, huge sales, big estimates going into all-time high territory, preferably higher quality funds in there like the Fidelities, the JP Morgans of the world. But what's really catching my attention here with CrowdStrike is you can see the earnings gap. Okay, so it gaps up, opens on the lower of the bar, pushes up there, really strong, big volume coming through. And then these blue dots here. This is a free tool. Search my name in the indicators. This one here, Jack Corsellis RS line. Okay, I like looking for these blue dots, these 52 
two week highs. It shows the stock is outperforming the SNP 500. There was a lot of strength in the cybersecurity group as well. So again, I'm kind of looking at group themes as well. So CrowdStrike said, said scalers, Palo Altos of the world, various other ones too were very strong. So I'm looking for this. I'm looking for institutional footprints. I'm looking for a lot of buying. And then I'm looking for a lack of selling, a lack of distribution. So what I like is then when the stock just remains in this nice uptrend here, staying above key moving averages, and then generally speaking, tightness in price, thin real bodies, 52 week highs. And then when the pullback comes into key moving averages, then I'm looking for specific candlesticks. I'll take you through. I'm looking for volume to dry up. So you see how the volume just dries up here below the 30 bar average. You have a lot of volume on the up move, certainly on the earnings. This is what buying looks like. This is what buying looks like. Really, really good to see. And then the stock's pulling back down here. Okay. So now I'm looking around the 21 day MX. I'm going, okay, leading stock. I'm expecting supportive action around the 21 day EMA, which is the blue line, or around the 50 day simple period moving average, which is the purple line. And this kind of zone in between as well. I'm looking for the footprints. I'm looking for certain characteristics, certain candlesticks. I'll actually drop this down onto the one hour chart for you in a minute. But I'm looking at this bar here, then this really tight bar. So I call these really tight bars that are sitting on one or more key moving averages on low relative volume trigger bars. Now these can help create a very asymmetric risk versus reward trade. And then I'm trying to free roll the trade quickly as well because the position is currently up around about what is it 20 percent 21 percent something like that and the initial risk i'm up over 10 times the initial risk on the position that's pretty darn good to be honest with you then drop it down onto the one hour chart and what i'm looking for is i'm looking for footprints and i'll show you this on uber i'll go into this step for uber for you as well so what i'm doing is i'm looking for footprints now i like looking for gap down reverse bars shake out demand tails trigger bars but i like doing it across multiple time frames so this crowd strike here what do you think large operators are doing here okay look at the volume coming through it's about five hundred thousand shares traded the prior closes here gaps down shake out demand tail pushes up this is strength intercession pulls back down tightness and price generally speaking low relative volume indicates there's not much supply and then this is what i like to see on trigger bars just tight action all throughout the session is actually pretty much trading within the range of the first one hour candlestick and about in the upper half as well and the volume generally dries up this is what I like to look for. I like to look for these tight contractions in price, both on the weekly charts, the daily charts, and also dropping it down onto the one hour chart when I'm really kind of dialed in and focused on trigger bars. This is optimal action to see. I really like this behavior to see. And then from a trade management standpoint, what I'm trying to do with my own trading is for me, I'm an intermediate term trend follower, okay? So what I'm trying to do is get in the position with a favorable initial stop loss and then trying to mitigate the risk. So take all of the risk out and then sit and ride the intermediate term trend. Now for me to then ride the intermediate term trend, I've now got half of the position left. And what I'm looking for is closes below the black line being the 10 day EMA to exit a quarter of the position and a close below the 21 day EMA being the blue line to exit the other quarter of the position. So I'm then trying to get positioned in stocks and then try and ride this to the best of my ability. Now, sometimes I'll kind of update that and go, okay, maybe I keep some back for a close below the 50. If it starts getting really extended from the 10 day, maybe I'll choke some off, lower the day, lower the day, lower the day. But for me, I'm an intermediate term swing trader. So I'm very active early on in a position. I like to get in, free roll it, remove all of the risk. And then I like to sit and let the trend play out. Now you never know whether the trend is gonna go 5%, 50%, 500%, or if you get stopped out in two days. You don't know, that is the nature of the beast. That is trading. Let me take you through Uber. So this one here, now what I really like with Uber is I was able to add to the position and backstop in a profit. I think I did that in one of the recent recent YouTube videos for you, but I'm just gonna show you this here. So again, it's a low pivot in between the 50 and the two and the 21 and 10. So this region here, okay, leading stock included in the S&P, really good trend, 52 week highs. I'll show you the market Smith data for this one in a, uh, in a little bit, but let me just take you down to the one hour chart, show you this. Again, it's about trying to study and follow the footprints. That's what we do a lot on this channel. Okay, really tape reading, tape reading at a high level. So I'm then on the lookout for this. Okay, gap down reverse bar, similar to what we saw on CrowdStrike. But then you see this here, okay? This is what I call bullish synchronicity. Prior closes here, gaps up, opens here, pushes up. Then look at the tightness. Tight, 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 tight. Volume generally dries up as well. This is just indicating to my mind, there's absorption of supply. There's not much supply coming to the market. Large operators have got the stock in the position to push it through here. This is the timeless principle of contraction and expansion. I'm looking for these areas of contraction because then I'm playing for the expansion that then follows these areas of contraction. And then I'm obviously trying to think about, okay, identification, controlling the risk, create asymmetric risk versus world trading opportunities. So the initial risk on Uber is about two and a quarter percent, so nice and tight. And then what happens with Uber is because I'm targeting this low pivot down here, my expectation is price runs up to the high of the base and it then goes into this overhead resistance. Now there's going to be some trap buyers there. It's also going to be psychological. You're going to have people like me that are trying to then free roll into the position or sell all their position into that. So then I'm on the lookout for a potential ad. And here you get what I call a shakeout demand tail. 
So you get a shakeout demand tail here. So the initial entry is here, shakeout demand tail here. I can bump my stop loss up on the, the original shares, and then I can look to add back my half that I sold off. So now I'm doubling my position size, but I'm then taking no additional risk on the ad. Really, really, really like that. And then what I do is I then free roll the ad in there. So I free roll the ad, push my stop loss on the entire position to 62.14. And now let's see if Uber can go out of the base like this. And ideally I can kind of catch a trend like that. So I don't know how well Uber is going to trend, but I'm going to find out see how far that intermediate trend, term trend wants to go but 52 week highs uber looks like a leading stock broadcom here so similar i think we spoke about this in the last youtube video okay this is bullish synchronicity this is what institutions buying a shed ton of stock looks like okay look at this here bullish synchronicity very high price stock here around about a thousand dollars a share look at the volume coming through the dollar volume is huge 52 week highs and then it's pulling back down to the 10 21 day ema in between the kind of 50 day and the 21 day pulling back down here look how the volume just dries up on the pullback relative to what you saw on the rally this is just indicating there's not much supply tightness in price low relative volume pulling into key moving average is, okay, now it's in the vicinity, the region that I would expect it to be in big kind of big cap stock mega cap stock like this 21 day 50 days more so where i'm going to be uh, more so where i'm going to be looking for it so then you get this really tight bar here a little shake out to martel look how the volume's half the 30 bar average it just looks good drop it down onto the one hour chart as well you'll see similar characteristics okay so look at the tightness coming through okay you get this clear change of character here on the one hour chart so yeah, it's moving down here clear change of character look at the volume pop and then you get this shake out to martel see the tightness see the proximity of price to the 10 21 and 50 period moving average on the one hour chart look how the volume dries up doesn't that look very similar to CrowdStrike? doesn't it look very similar to uber yes absorption of supply lack of supply looks the same it's just the visual representation of it that you're trying to dial in your pattern recognition to and then create asymmetric risk towards the initial risk on the trade is two dot is two dot one three percent so entry plus free roll same day bump the stop loss up a little bit i think on that day as well and then for me mental framework is pop test and then the reversal so that's then when the intermediate term selling rules selling guidelines that i use so closes below the 10 day the 21 day maybe on a bigger cap stock like this i want to keep some back for the 50 day again i'll see how the trade plays out i'm fluid i adapt okay i have an idea of then how i want to manage the position but i will go based upon what what the market is telling me is the best thing to be doing so i have kind of this framework for how i'm thinking about managing it but i'm fluid i will change i will adapt subject to new information becoming available that's a bayesian mentality then you'll see some different ones here so this is estc so on this earnings gap here it's the largest volume ever traded and the stock's coming out of a huge base. So phase four, phase one into phase two, powering out into phase two on the largest volume ever on the earnings, 52 week highs, not bad, right? And then what chart pattern do you see? I see a cup and a handle forming here. Now my initial stop loss was for me wide, 4.96%, that's wide. If I'm ever like four or 5% territory, that's a wide initial stop loss for me. So then what I do is I bump my stop loss up to the lower the bar here. So lower than then kind of breakout attempt day, but it didn't really break out. So I bump my stop loss up to here simultaneously the next day while I'm then free rolling the trade. So this is the risk mitigation that I teach you in other videos like the YouTube video. So for me, there's four parts of every single trade, identify, control, mitigate, and optimize. So I work through the process. I first and foremost identify what I think is a high quality setup as per my criteria. Very key, as per my criteria. No one else's criteria, my criteria. I've been doing this a little while. And then I'm looking to control the risk. Now that's obviously very linked to the identification. For it to be a high quality setup, the risk the initial risk has to make sense as well. Then I move into risk mitigation. So what I'm trying to do is get positioned, take all of the risk out and then sit for intermediate term trends. And as I said earlier, I have no idea whether the intermediate term trend is gonna be 5%, 50%, 500% or if I get stopped out in two days time. No idea, I'm there to let the stock trend as far as the stock wants to trend. But for me, mental framework is pop, test and then reversal. So you can see here, currently an open position, still kind of undergoing that kind of testing reversal action. Obviously the FMC is coming out on Wednesday the 31st, that's going to play a significant part in terms of what are, what do a lot of these a lot of these stocks do. But for me, pop, can I free roll into it? So that's the risk mitigation. Testing action, can I sit through it? Yes. Can the stock then reverse and trend higher? If not, then I'm going to get stopped out, break even. Can you get gap downs? Can you get slippages? Absolutely you can. But that's how I work through the framework in my head. So if I show you INFA as well, so this stock here, leading stock, AI component to it as well, good volume coming through on the earnings, 52 week highs. Look at this persistently high volume as the stock is riding there. What do you think in institutions to do generally speaking volume dries up on the pullback and then what chart pattern do you see okay if we do this what chart pattern do you see oh cup handle shake out demand tail volume dries up nice rs line improving into this as well so for me it's that mental framework of okay what am i trying to do 
the, just just really like just break it down okay identify control mitigate and optimize and then i have a framework for what i'm expecting to happen after the trade so i'm expecting the stock to pop can i free roll into that so that's the third part the risk mitigation testing action can i sit through it there's type of characteristics i'm looking for on the testing action generally the volume to dry up the thin real body shake out demand tails gap down reverse bars holding key moving averages holding my entry point and then can i play the stock for a bigger move on the reversal and then try and sit and let the trend play out however far that trend wants to uh, however far that trend wants to uh, wants to go basically so that's that one there the rns this is a uh, much newer position this most recent position took this one on the 30th of uh, of january but this one here fomc coming out on the prior day being or the next day being the 31st of january from the entry here so again fomc a little bit of volatility so what do i do on this one well i want to get in free roll it ahead of the uh, ahead of the fmc so a tactic that i'll often employ is moving my stop loss up from the initial point which is 2.64 percent so 44.99 to then the low of the kind of a breakout attempt candlestick then free roll off of that one i'm not a trader who goes I've got to get I got to get one I got to get one times or two times my I don't give I don't care I don't care like I want to get the risk out of the trade once I've then got the risk out of the trade then I'll start thinking about optimizing profits so working through that process identify control mitigate optimize when the risk is out then I'll start thinking about okay optimizing profits now you're going to have some significant market events such as say the FMC on Wednesday the 31st I'm expecting some volatility so I don't want to be sat there with a two and a half percent initial open risk on the position when I could just go wow well, I can just free roll it there ideally I want this stock to pop if it doesn't and it comes down kind of puts in a shakeout I get knocked out around break even it may then reset after the FMC and then and I just go buy it back again. There's also the earnings coming out as well. So what I'll be doing is looking at the implied volatility move that the stock has going into the earnings. Do I have a profit cushion exceeding that? Am I happy with the risk? Tape reading it. Okay, what am I seeing heading into the earnings? Because this is a leading stock, cybersecurity related as well. Strong stock, 52 week highs. Let's drop it like this. You can see 126% earnings surprise seems to have sparked that rally there. Persistently high volume, 52 week highs, strong groups. And again, I'm trying to dial in and focus on the uh, leaders. I'll briefly touch upon a couple of other open positions I've so Pinterest, great reaction to the earnings coming out of this large phase one base as well after it gets obliterated in a phase four decline huge relative volume coming through 52 week high 52 week highs here and then it just pulls into the 10 day really nice tight bar look how the volume dries up no supply coming through tight initial stop under one and a half percent and then this one here is one that i'm just trying to ride earnings are coming up maybe it can kind of pull in set before the earnings give me a bit of bit of time to get in it and then see basically but yeah Pinterest going fine uh, meta different type of stock and in terms of like a like a mega cap but also buying it shake out to martel off the 50 day so you can see a variation of different setups that i employ here i go for low pivots i go to pullbacks for key moving averages when a stock is basing meta 50 day moving average you can see higher base breakouts with infa with estcs of the world those low pivots with crowd uber um, broadcoms of the world so i have a i have a toolbox at my disposal i think it's a very well trained very high, kind of highly tuned toolbox as well so i will adapt to what am i seeing in the market where am i seeing the relative strength where am i seeing the potential opportunities and then try and take advantage of those uh, of those opportunities. So yeah, met up trending um, well, and this is what I said, trying to ride the intermediate term trend for however far the intermediate term trend wants to go. Let me take you for a couple of uh, couple of break even trades. So this is KKR. So sometimes this happens, right? I'll take a, I'll take a position. So my entry is here at 81.95. My initial stop loss sent below the low of this bar here. So it's around about three, around about three percent risk. Now what I do here is I actually the trade starts getting out here, and I go, that's ah, a kind of financial banking stock. It's a little bit slow. I just want to see this go. I don't want to tie up capital because there's a whole heap of other high quality stocks, CrowdStrike, Uber's, Broadcoms, the ones you see here, other ones as well. Um, and I'm just like, I, I just want to see the stock go. So in January, I've been fairly ruthless actually in terms of aggressively pushing up the initial stop loss. So you saw it with VRNS, right? I'm aggressively pushing up the initial stop loss and taking the risk out. That's me as a trader. That's my personality. I like to get in, hit it, pu push my stop loss up if possible, free roll off of that, off of that new target if that opportunity becomes available. So then I'm in it, I free roll the trade, and then I want the stock to go, go gadget, basically. I don't want to hang, hang around and kind of arm and arm and tie up capital unnecessarily if there's a lot of other stocks. Also, if I don't think like, K, like, like KKR is not NVIDIA, right? It's not like the institutional stock right now, okay? It's not a software cybersecurity stock that's showing a whole heap of relative strength and the group looks ridiculously strong. So if I don't think it's like a proper TML NVIDIA of the world type stock, then I'm going to be more aggressive. I'm going to be less tolerant um, with it. So I want to get in, free roll it, and then just see the position go. Now, again, hindsight is 2020, right? Had I have not done that and had I have just waited down here with my initial stop loss, I'd now have an okay gain on the trade, right? The stock looks like it's starting to get out well. It's up like 6%, 7%, something like that. This happens. It is it is trading. If you think every single trade you take is going to look like a perfect Minovini VCP from his book, it ain't going to look like that. 
okay it ain't gonna look like that this is trading this is what trading looks like you'll be in stocks like this and you're like okay i free rolled it okay it didn't go i get knocked out break even then the stock turns around and goes guess what it happens it happened again on phm right so this one here Okay, so I'm in it here with my initial stop losses placed underneath the low of this bar here, about two and a half, two and a half percent. The stock starts getting out here a little bit. And then what I do is I just go, it's a home building stock. I just want to see it go. Like I literally am trying to buy it like here and I just want to see it start trending high. If it doesn't, I'm not very interested in it. It's a home builder. It's not Nvidia, right? I just want to get in it and I just want that to happen. Okay, the time value of money is very important. I just want to see it do that. So again, as I said, for me, this, this may not suit your personality. That's fine. You are not me. I am me. This is how I manage positions. Early on, I'm aware that I have open risk on the position. My first objective when I've identified and control is what? Is mitigate. I'm looking to mitigate that risk as soon as prudently possible. Okay, as soon as prudently possible, I'm looking to mitigate the risk because my expectation is the stocks are just trend. Right now, I have very little tolerance for stocks that aren't kind of going immediately. I just want to be involved pretty much in stocks that do that from the from the get go. So what I do here is I adjust my stop loss up to the low of this bar pretty much and then just free roll there. Take half the position off. I just want to see it go. Now, over here, you had DH, you had DHI, which is the big kind of um, institutional home building stock in the US. But reported earnings and the market's reaction to it was negative. So it actually dragged a lot of the stocks down in the group. Then I get knocked out here, break even on the uh, on the position and then it kind of turns around and then the earnings so it is what it is it's not really gone anywhere but again i haven't tied up capital and actually it then means i can get in other trades such as like an infa an ESTC, an uber a crowdshot other stocks that are potentially setting up as well so the time value is really important not just kind of hanging on and hoping and hoping and hoping um i just want to basically see them go very very quickly indeed uh, fcx so this is one here well, this is one where I'm glad I free rolled it because if I didn't and I didn't trade with a stop loss, I would have had a much larger loss here. So the initial stop loss is placed underneath the low of this bar, about two, about two point two, two point five two percent. So this one here, it's a copper stock. It's potentially building a very large base in here. Okay, you can see the size of this base coming through. What I then like is look how this is then moving to the upside here. Look at the volume coming through. Look at the volume. Bullish synchronicity. Bullish synchronicity. Bullish synchronicity. Widespread open gap up. Open on the low. Push up. Pulling back down to the 21 day EMA. So that is where I'd be expecting a commodity related stock. FCX, Freeport, Macaron is a copper stock. So it's pulling back down here. The volume generally dries up quite nicely. And then you get this inside bar, shake out demand tail, strong close on it. If I go down to say the one hour chart for this one as well, if we do this like this, so does every trade work? Absolutely, every trade does not work. But if you look here on the one hour chart, I'm going, okay, that looks like a lot of buying. Look at this, that looks like a lot of buying to me. And then it's pulling back down. And then I start to see shake out demand tail, coming in coming in on the prior session so then i'm targeting it through the high of the bar there i then get some slippage of them buying up here at 41.61 and then you get this bar where i get filled so it's a it's a nice looking bar right look at the tightness in the prior session look at the volume drying up it's nice it's a decent setup but commodity stocks yeah they're going to be more difficult to um to trade so i get filled here and then i sell half of the position here bump the stop loss up so again i'm in push this stop loss up aggressively when the stock starts getting out if it's prudent to do that free roll the trade and then i get knocked out break even here it is what it is. Again, I just want to be involved in stocks that are pretty much doing that. I have very little tolerance, very little patience. Again, FCX, Freeport, Macron, it's not NVIDIA. I'm going to have less tolerance, less patience if I don't think the stock is like a real kind of TML, just true market leader type stock. Huge earnings, huge sales involved in a new revolutionary product, massive estimates coming through, institutions buying at hand of this, aka NVIDIA, right? Um, it, it's not it, it's not that stock. So again, that's me, my trading. Um, it's going to happen with how I trade. It is what it is. If that doesn't suit your personality, it doesn't suit your personality. Uh, you are right. So this one here, United Rentals. A little bit annoyed on um, on this one. Obviously, it would have a pretty decent um, gain on this one. It then got out quite well on the earnings, so about 16%. But I then got shaken out, and some of you may recognize this bar. This is called a shakeout demand tail, okay? So shakeout demand tail shook me out. This happened. So you are right. A leading stock at the time, you can see the 52 week highs coming through here. You can see the nice, what I call bullish synchronicity here. The stock came out previously of this decent size base. Maybe it's, it's like a bit of cup and handle, VC, whatever you want to call it, but it comes out of this big base here. So now it's the first kind of testing action off that big base breakout, pulls down to the 21 and I start seeing the footprints. I start seeing the footprints of large operators. I start seeing the volume drive, really tight bar sitting right in between the 1021. So I'm in there, initial stop loss, it's tighter than this. I then get some slippage where I'm then getting knocked out at 2.3%. 2, 2 so then what I could have done is those of you who followed the channel for a while, you recognize that bar and go, that's a good check out demand out. Why didn't you buy it back? Exactly. Why didn't I buy it back? Now, there is then a good shake out tomato. So then I could have gone in, placed my initial stop loss just underneath the low. That would have been a good trade. It happens. I make mistakes. Guess what? I'm a trader and I'm a human being as well. So this is what can happen. You get shaken out and then I should be buying it back and I didn't buy it back. It is what it is, basically. 
Um, so yeah, that one there could have done it better in terms of the initial setup is is good in my view. And then I get shaken out, and what I did wrong here is I should have then been looking to buy it back and then try and then sit, maybe then hold into the earnings because decent enough profit cushion there to probably hold into the earnings. Um, BLDR. So this one here I took on Friday of, of last week and I was down around around a percent on it and it wasn't like the home building stocks. So this is a home building stock. This is a DHI um, earnings reaction that, as I said, with like PHM was just kind of like drag dragging the group down a little bit. But this one here, okay, it kind of pulls back. It does hold the 21 day EMA. I see some positions. I just deleted it. I didn't want to do that. No, I just deleted it from this list. Let me go and put it back in. I'll show you a little shortcut to do that. Go here, go here, add to watch list. And then I want to put it in there like that. There we go. Okay, so B, BLDR like this. Okay, it's pulling back down. It does find support on the 21. You get a nice gap down reverse bar here. This is a really nice shake out demand tail trigger bar like that. There's a really, really good setup indeed. This here will be quad witching day. So kind of ignore that large volume there. The stock is kind of building like a cup with a high handle, I would say. Good rally coming through in here. Like it, a lot of strength in the group. So then it goes and puts in this nice tight bar, inside bar, low relative volume, favorable initial risk. And Friday towards the close, I was down around about a percent in it. Um, and I was just like, hey, it's just not going. I don't want to tie up capital. It's the FOMC next week. There's yeah, there's other stocks setting up, um, kind of high quality software, AI related stocks, maybe some semiconductor stocks. I'm like, I don't want to tie up capital. I'm just going to take the 1% 1, 1 loss on the, uh, on the chin, reset and go again. Now, hindsight, 2020 um it would have then popped up there like four percent free roll into that tickety boo uh, but i didn't i exit the position there so i look back on that and go did i really need to exit the position that that kind of quickly i know why i made the decision but did i kind of rush it had it had not been a friday heading into the close and then going over the weekend holding a loss over the weekend had it been a tuesday or something like that maybe i would have been more lenient maybe maybe not hindsight's 2020 uh, shopify I still think this is like a TML type stock. So this one here showing a lot of relative strength, um, it's building like this kind of like uh, kind of high lows looks OK. Gap down reversal bar here again with this one here. I think maybe I should have been looking closer to like 21 day um, EMA, but it goes and puts in this nice shake out to Martel. So I'm then targeting it through the higher the bar, the volume dries up nicely. So I'm like, okay, I want to want to see this thing go. Um, so Shopify, my biggest loss of the month, three of three dot one percent. So not a very big loss if you're swing trading off the daily chart. As I said, my initial, my uh, my average loss this month has been two has been two has been two dot zero three percent. So I'm very happy with that. So Shopify, largest loss of the month, three dot ten percent. I can live with that. Is it a bit annoying when you then get shaken out with this shakeout demand? Here? Um, yeah, could I then maybe been buying it back through the higher the bar? Yeah, maybe maybe I could actually. Um, maybe. Maybe I could have, to be honest with you. Uh, but 52 week high, Shopify, strong stock. Maybe it can kind of tighten, set, maybe a shakeout to Martel in coming sessions around the 21. But Shopify, high on my radar, great reaction to the most recent earnings as well. Look at this. This is what institution buying looks like. Look at the volume, look at the spike, look at the trend that unfolded there afterwards. And then again, proximity of 10, 21 day EMAs, that kind of region in there, sorry, 21 and 50 day moving averages. That's when I'm looking for the footprint for more of those like pullback buys. So gap down, reverse bar, shakeout to Martel. So those kind of things. But yeah, Shopify largest loss of the uh, of the month wheat and precious metals again this one here gold stock so i was looking at this and i was like i think fidelity are in this one and i was like wow some of these guys look at the size of this base guys look at this this is mega 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 base it's a huge base a lot of gold stocks building big base gld potential for a month like a 10 year cup and handle on the monthly chart it's ridiculous so i was then looking at the gold stocks and i was like that's interesting so i'm seeing like a change of character here now gold commodity related stocks i want to buy them more so on pullbacks so and my initial stop okay where i then get knocked out is 1.55 percent so again i'm keeping the risk tight but as this is then pulling back down here what i'm looking at is going ah interesting so now you can see what i'm looking at a bit more right what i'm looking at here is okay it tries to go doesn't go shake out demand tail undercuts these lows here nice strong close on it as well the volume dries up so i'm like target it through the high there stop there maybe this one maybe this one can um can go i had a, a another gold stock that i was targeting previously which is kim ross gold i was targeting it uh here shake out demand tail to the point it gapped and i and i didn't get filled but similar similar kind of thinking here that gold stocks they tend to chop around so i'd rather get them on like gap down reverse bars shake out demand tails here and then try and ride whatever the trend is is going to be that was in my thinking with uh wheat and precious metal and you can see kgc same day as well putting in this shake out demand tail to the 21 hindsight a little bit choppy wasn't it uh, a little bit choppy up here it isn't it, it it isn't my best uh isn't my best setup to be to be honest with you it's not it's not my best trade of the month it's actually if i was ranking all of these in terms of best setup to worst setup and again you want to come away from like judging the quality of decision by the by the preceding action so a winning trade or a losing trade actually even if this turned out to be a winning trade i'd still view it as actually this is probably the worst trade i took all kind of all month um 
basically. And again, it was Friday the 29th, but I then got knocked out on, um, when I get knocked out, second of Jam, which is why I've included that. But uh, yeah, it's my worst one, I would actually say, in terms of like the actual identification process, the initial risk is, is pretty good, but this kind of chop up here, yeah, don't know. Um, I don't. I don't think that there is my uh, is my best trade. But what I want to do now is I want to show you some of the markets met data because it's really good to kind of see see the setup, see the variations of setup, see my kind of my thought process for how I'm identifying, controlling, mitigating, managing the positions. But something that really goes into it is actually understanding the stock a little bit more, understanding the group strength, understanding the fundamentals. So we'll hop across to markets met and I'll show you some of the key fundamental data that I pay close attention to. So we've got the market smith charts are loaded up remember they're today's video sponsor if you're interested in a discounted trial then there is a link in the description and the comment section below i'm going to take you through two stocks which i currently have a long position in at the time of filming to help give you a little bit of a better understanding for the fundamental data that i'm looking at so we're going to go through crowdstrike we're also going to go through uber as well so my eyes are always drawn to this this is the annual eps being reported and also the estimates for the current year and also the next year if applicable my eye is also drawn to this the core quarterly earnings being reported and also the sales as well. So let's just start off here. The EPS, what I like to look for is that the EPS is growing year over year. Institutions absolutely love this. You can see the company goes losing money, losing money, losing money, 27 cents, 67 cents, $1.54, $2.96, $3.74. You can see the estimates, 2024, 92%, 2025, 27%. And the green dot, green arrow there means the forward guidance has been raised. What's also important with this is the estimates are really good. The EPS is ticking up on a year-over-year -year basis and it's also going into all-time high territory and it's a relatively new stock in terms of the IPO being 2019. The group is very strong. Computer software security, three out of 197. There's a lot of strong stocks here. Pano Altos of the world, Ticket S, Z Scalers of the world, clearly CrowdStrike as well. VRNS is similar too in terms of like online cyber software security related. Then what I like to look for here, is the EPS. Now, obviously, triple digits are fantastic, both triple digits for the earnings, triple digits for the sales, if applicable, but high double digit sales are very good. And what I like to look for here is the quarterly EPS, preferably going into all time high territory versus the prior eight quarters. So you can see it goes 30 cents up to then 40 cents, up to 57 cents, 74 cents, 82 cents. So there's sequential growth quarter over quarter. <clears throat> I really like that. If you look at the sales, okay, eight quarters ago, the company reported on a quarterly basis 431 million. Now it's just gone up to 768 million. And you can see, generally speaking, the sequential growth on a quarterly basis. It's really good. I like to see higher quality funds involved as well. Preferably the stock is in 52, 52 week high territory or all time high territory. Fidelity in there. I like to see the higher quality funds in there as well. RS line pointing to the pointing to the starts. But they're the main things that I'm focused on when I'm looking at looking at the fundamentals. If I take you through Uber as well going to be a similar story so if we start here in terms of the eps on an annual basis you can see company goes losing money losing money losing money 2023 profitable reports a dollar and five cents 2024 a dollar 76 68 percent for the eps increase coming through and then the forward guidance being raised as well okay like that if you take a look here at the quarterly eps the last two quarters have been triple digits we like to see that if you take a look at the sales growth going from 5.7 billion eight quarters ago to 9.2 billion like it take a look at the higher quality funds involved okay jp morgan in q1 this is when they q1 of march 2023 so q1 of 2023 is what i'm trying to say so around about this period in here i think we did this in the most recent youtube video they, they took an initial position of like 700 750 million dollars and then have added in subsequent quarters. You've got some other high quality funds that have initiated and adding. You've got Fidelity in there as well. So high quality funds there, relatively new in terms of an IPO into all time high territory, 52 week highs on the relative strength line. Really, really like it. So these are the things I'm looking for. I'm looking at the trend of the earnings per share on an annual basis. I'm looking for the estimates to be in all time high territory. I'm looking for big growth in terms of the, the, the earnings, the sales coming through. I'm looking for preferably stocks near 52 week highs or all time highs. I'm looking for a higher quality funds to be in there actively and proactively accumulating positions as well so it's not just about looking at a chart it's also for me about looking at the fundamentals as well thinking about the liquidity of the stock thinking about a higher higher quality funds going to be involved in this stock is this a stock institutions really want to own and then trying to pinpoint the leaders in the group as well so i really hope you guys have enjoyed that video it's given you a good sense of how i identify control uh, mitigate and optimize my trades but also a little bit of a deeper dive here in terms of the key fundamentals that i look for so thank you very much for watching if you made it all this way, I really do appreciate it. Thank you for supporting the channel and I look forward to seeing you in a future video.